Hey everybody, my name is Leland with Friends of San Juans and welcome back to another episode of the FOSJ Video Shorts. Tips and tricks for backcountry travel in the San Juan Mountains. Today, we're joined by Josh Kling with Fort Lewis College Outdoor Pursuits who's going to talk a little bit about terrain management. As backcountry skiers and riders, we are constantly managing our uncertainty by gathering information and controlling the terrain that we're traveling in. Josh is going to talk a little bit about how to control our terrain and what to look out for when we're traveling in the backcountry. Hey all, my name is Josh Kling and I'm one of the coordinators for the Fort Lewis College Outdoor Pursuits program. Today, we're going to talk about the five red flags and how we can use them to mitigate risk when traveling in avalanche terrain and making terrain choices. Our five red flags are recent avalanches, cracking and wumping, recent loading from new snow, rapid warming, and recent winds. Let's take a look at each of those five red flags. The best indicator that your snowpack is avalanche prone is recent avalanches. If you are out traveling and you see signs of avalanches or snowpack that has recently avalanched, that's the best indicator that the rest of the snow around there is probably avalanche prone too. The second red flag is cracking and wumping of the snowpack. If you are out touring around and getting shooting cracks off your skis or snowshoes, or sudden collapses or wumps of the snowpack, that is mother nature screaming in your ear that that terrain is avalanche prone. Had you been on a steeper slope, it likely would have avalanched. Our third red flag is recent loading from new snow. Anytime we've had over 12 inches in 12 hours or an inch an hour, that should be considered red flag storm. Our fourth red flag is wind. Anytime we have wind enough to transport snow or typically over 15 miles an hour, that should make you think about loading of the slopes. Our fifth and final red flag is going to be rapid warming. Anytime that temperature goes up over three to five degrees per hour or is above freezing, we'll call that a red flag as well. If you leave the car in the morning on the top of Red Mountain Pass and it's absolutely freezing, say around zero degrees, and then a couple hours later, it's over freezing, so over 32 degrees, that's a red flag. If you're hot, the snowpack is likely hot too and not adjusting well to those new temps. So Josh, what are some things we can do if we experience one or more of these red flags when we're out traveling the mountains? Good question. If snowpack and avalanches are a concern, terrain is your solution. Terrain is literally the only thing you can control when you're out touring. You can't control where avalanches are happening. You can't control cracking or wumping or recent loading from a storm or wind or what the temperatures are doing, but you can control where you go. Anytime you're observing those red flags, I tend to stick to terrain under 30 degrees. No one ever complains about skiing boot top powder that's only 23 degrees. Is there anything in the avalanche forecast that can tell us where to travel? Absolutely. I try to check the avalanche forecast every morning regardless of whether I'm going out. If you read the avalanche forecast every morning, it's easier to follow along with what's going on in the snow. When I read the avalanche forecast in the morning, I try to look at the big picture, like our avalanches happening on Wolf Creek Pass, Red Mountain Pass, or Lizard Head Pass, as well as the smaller picture, like there's been avalanches on the east side of the pass or near and above tree line. Thanks a lot, Josh. Let's remember to always keep those five red flags in the back of our heads when traveling in the backcountry. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.